All right, all right, good morning, traders. Happy Sunday, indeed, Graylin. Right back at you. Good morning, Michael. All right. I'm curious. I've I've got some exciting things to talk about today. Um Okay. Yes, I've got some exciting things. Uh, it's good to see everybody. We're going to give it just another minute or two. Let any stragglers. There's another one popping in. Good morning, Perry. Um... Give me just a second here. We're missing somebody who was just on in Zoom. So, or in, excuse me, in Discord. I've been making some Discord upgrades. Uh... Oh, no, I think we've got everybody. Okay. All right. Good morning, Stephen. Stephen noticed. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. Let's get through the business first. We'll hit it towards the end. Welcome, everybody, to the Market Watch Group Weekly Market Prep. Uh, very excited for the Sunday session. Coffee in hand. Very nice spring weather here in Utah. I hope it's the same where you are. Let's keep going. Here's the disclaimers. As always, be careful. We're not advisors. We're not brokers. We don't give guidance. We don't give recommendations. Make sure you evaluate and own any decisions you make. The end. Agenda. Today. Market posture. Of course. Yeah. We're we're all, I think, feeling a little bit of stress. There's a little stress in the market. Not that we're feeling the stress, feeling stress in the market uh, across a couple of our components, I think. We'll see what the damage is. A couple people posted theirs already. I love that. Um, in Discord, the Discord community, and and to give you a preview, that's the that's I've upgraded us. We're now officially under community status, and so that's that's going to kind of open some things up. And I'll show, I'll walk you through it. If you're on it, you should pull it up. If you're not on it, I'm going to send another invite today because it's becoming more of a focal point in how we're going to interact as a group, including how these presentations will be delivered so you don't have to have all these different links you just have to pop into discord bam whatever's happening you're there it's beautiful you're gonna love it this week we're gonna we're gonna test and kind of practice and and work on the transition and then we'll complete that transition okay we'll talk about the economic calendar of course what do we have coming up not a lot uh, we'll Look at the sectors and see a couple of things. Do we think oil is still going and we should add some? That'll be a question. Whether or not we think it's going to or not, we probably should add some in case it does, right? So possibly a couple of energy stocks. Staple or excuse me, basic materials, a little more iffy. We'll see, we'll see what's holding up and what's not here as we get into that. Uh, watch list maintenance. There's, a, there's definitely some cleanup that we're going to do today. We're going to start 
getting rid of things. And if you remember, if you were with us back in August, September, a similar situation. So we have to make, we have to recognize that we're in a, a, a potentially similar situation. And that ended up in a 10% correction. We're at two or 3% right now. So if that gets worse, that's what we're looking at. Right. And one of the, one of the, I hope you're kind of making mental note or even journaling it, but like what happened back then? Go back. Um, and if you remember, one of the things that happened is our watch list really thinned out, right? Really thinned out. We were, we were, uh, getting rid of things that were breaking down and just sort of like, all right, it's, if it shows back up, we'll put it back on. Now there's some things that we don't get rid of, right? There's some stocks that you're going to have um, on your watch list that are just permanent fixtures. Good morning, Bob. Good to see you. Um, Steven says, definitely we should have oil. Should I, th I think it, I think it could Stay high for sure. You know, does it test 100? That's the question. Does it test 100? Uh, oil, 100 a barrel. That's a steep price. Like the big seven, Bob. Yes, sir. Yeah. And there's just going to be others. Everyone's going to have like uh, different ones, right? Some of us are going to have overlaps. There's just some that I... I know their options are good. I even if they're down, I'm gonna watch them and look to try to trade their comebacks. And yeah, absolutely. You're just gonna have some stocks that you find you like watching and trading. Great, put them on your list. Keep them on your list. Hundred percent, Stephen. If it tests a hundred, there's plenty of momentum for us. Hundred percent. Uh, agreed. Watch list maintenance, early week shop. Do we? I still also think there's a chance we have setups. I still think that these next three weeks could all of a sudden pop. Don't do not underestimate a pervasively bullish market. So uh, let's uh, let's make sure we're ready. What should I name the list? Whoops. Sometimes my Alexa thinks I'm talking to it. I don't understand. The list called Alexa thinks I'm talking to it, right? <laughs> Bad Alexa. Alexa, stop. Which phone number, contact, or device do you want to call? All right. <laughs> okay. Let's uh sorry about that. My 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 Amazon was trying to take over for a minute. I can still just unplug it. <laughs> we're in trouble when we can't just unplug them, right? That's when we're in trouble. Okay, here we go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um keep me tabs. Uh, right. I have a good reason this time, uh, Stephen, for not having. When you see everything that is available for you in Discord, you'll forgive me for all of the time that I have not updated this. Uh, okay, let's get it. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be pretty cool, you guys. Like, There's a whole calendar of events, and it's like... Uh, yeah, you're going to love what it's going to be. It's going to be cool what we have going on in there and the way that we'll be able to interact. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I spent some time working on that. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's talk about this market of ours, shall we? Seems appropriate. Let's get this to a weekly chart. Now, remember, there's there's really nothing. This is red. It's not like we're like, oh, it's red. Our score is dropping. We score trend. We score trend. So 
this thing as it regresses is going to help us understand how strong we think that the long term is from here or not. I've got a couple of lines that I'm looking at. It might touch the top of this one. It might come all the way back down to this red. We got above the red, but not by much. So does it come all the way back? Does it come somewhere in between? And then I'm going to connect a couple of these dots and say, all right, that's that's likely going to be, you know, what, what, what it is now. But on this pullback, certainly we recognize that it's happening. Um, and so the, uh, yeah, right now that's kind of what our thought process is here. Is this going to be, and and here's what's similar. I, I think you guys are going to remember this, but we, we had a very similar discussion right through here. When was that? That was just in the summer, July into August. And as we came down, and turned, well, that was actually quite bullish looking right there. The problem was it just didn't last. And and as we fell into this, that's when things really, this is what we're looking for. Um, our posture, well, let's just check it out. <clears throat> I'm going to think our posture was down, but yeah, it wasn't negative until here. So Let's look at this 9.11 to 9.18. So 9.11, I want to know where our posture was. Let's go back. To 9.11. And you can see it was, we, we had come down in August and then we got a little bit of a upwind, and then it was September. That was, uh, we were about one week later. One week later that this came down. September 24th. Okay, so you'll, you'll see why I want to talk about this here. So September 24th is here. So by this point, our posture had dropped for the second time. <clears throat> and, and at that point, you're just sort of like, okay, there's not much we can do here, but wait. Why? Well, because this whole beginning here, if you move this over, is very similar to what you see happening in here. Right? A, the same kind of a, of a structure. Now, over there, it became... A bear market. We ended up dropping at the worst point about just under 30%. Over here, so this was a bear. And over here, this was a correction. We'll just put 10% correction. So what is this going to be? If it's, right, so now here's the thing is, this still has the chance of being a flag. <laughs> so I have three possibilities here. A is flag. B is 10%. C is bear. There's no reason for us to think, oh, this is potentially a bear. There's no reason to think that, <laughs> right? It would have to, it would have to go, first of all, not be a flag. So then we're like, oh, this doesn't happen. Then it would have to go through this entire 10% process. And then instead of reversing, it would drop again. So then it would say now, well, I mean, that's a lot for us to just think, yep, that's what's going to happen before it gets down to here, right? But I, I want you to understand that what's happening now, we we you're, we talked about, we had these exact same conversations back here when that happened. Very similar. Look at, look at the setups, look at the patterns, look at what was going on. 
nearly identical. And and if you were with me back here, we had those same conversations right back here. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it is in keeping with the seasonality. Uh, yeah. And and right. And it could still give us one more bounce because here's the thing. Let me give you one more place we had that conversation here. And on this one, it went higher for just a little more and then it dropped. So could we see something where we go, oh, you know what? It goes higher for three weeks and then we drop down 10% 472. I love what you're thinking. I like to know where my where my levels are. Like, where's my, where's my deep consolidation, which I would put around five to 6%. So 524, five and a quarter, we're talking 27 to 31. So just under, so I'd say deep consolidation would be like in this area here. And then correction is down in this area here. Yeah. And then um, we wouldn't be in a bear market uh, for quite a quite a little while. Uh, One hundred and five points puts us down at four twenty. Um, there, if it dropped all the way down to there, we'd be like, "Oh, we we've, we've reached a bear market," which was it didn't get declared until about there. So, yeah, it's 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 good for us to take a step back. Right, we get the thirty thousand foot view of, of what's when we look at this long term chart. We're just assessing, basically, what I'm telling you is my my score is not going to change because I have a red candle. That's what I'm telling. You. However, as traders, what we have to recognize is there's always going to be somewhat of a lag in our market posture turning negative. There should be. If your posture is quick to get bearish, you're going to get beat up in the market. Markets tend to be pervasively bullish. They're bullish longer and more often than they're bearish. But the fear in our psyche convinces us otherwise. So we're always like, oh, it's going to turn bearish soon, <laughs> right? It's like, no, statistically, that's not true. So this posture process that we do is oriented to not be like, oh, red candle, take it negative. And it's like, just whipsaw yourself and you'll be negative more than anything else. When we see this, we don't think, hey, now I'm going to put my score negative. My score is not going to change. It's 1.5. That still looks outrageously strong and bullish to me. Very strong. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bet against that. But I do want to have a sense of like, well, what what should I be thinking and aware of and concerned of as, as I do consider what would be a consolidation or a deep consolidation where I'm down 5 6% from the highs versus a correction where I'm down 10% from the highs versus a bear market where I'm down 20% from the highs. And, and, and just like, Bear markets don't just show up out of nowhere. Well, okay, the pandemic kind of it did, but even then we had plenty of things developing before that happened. Look at the forest, not the trees. Love it. Yes, sir. Bear market, that would be equal to the start of that trend. Um, yeah, about. And, and so, you know, for me, I'm going to agree with Stephen. He says, I'm going with the correction. If anything, my thought would be, actually, I'm going with um, more of a, a deep, I'm going 5% for now. I'm actually going flag. I should have added like the 5% level in here. That would have been this one right here. The 5% level where we, maybe we come down and go up and then we come down and then we right so i i don't know we'll see we'll see uh it's good to have a sense of what the possibilities might be that's that's the the gist of this but 
at the end of the day, let's go back. Yeah, so so I do want you to recognize that, right? We, we have to, this is a tool that we're working with. We have to acknowledge this tool will lag. It's never going to be like you go look at the market and it dropped, and then you go look at your posture and, you're, and you dropped at the exact same time. There has to be a little lag for us to come down to make sure that we stay where we need to in, in order to stay with a bull market as long as we can. Um, but what we can recognize is, well, what would I be looking for to occur? And that would be something like this. If I break this low, so if I come down and bounce up, and then come down that that new that low that this establishes on the weekly chart is going to be a critical level going forward right so okay love the discussion i love the i love the the inputs today feel free to put your two cents in the chat now okay so let's as we do our our math measuring retracements and putting labels on it, right? Our, our labels of bear, correction, consolidation. We went as high as 524.61. Uh, we ended a little off the lows at 510.85. We've dropped 13 points, 13.76, which off of the high of 524.61 is a whopping 2.6%. From here to here, we've dropped 2.6%. If, if that has us like, oh, the sky is falling. <laughs> We're getting rattled too easily. Right? Take a breath, 2%. Where are we relative to the 50? We're sitting on top of it still. We're sitting on top of it. These aren't things that we score in this process, but these are things that we see and, and have influence, right? So, um, okay, so let's score this. What, what do we have? We had five days. One, two, three, four, five. From this point here, we did drop our score. Right right here, we had already dropped our score. And where did we end up? Lower. Easy enough then. I'm not going to, I'm not in a position right now where I'm going to like try to like draw lines and just rescore it and say, this is a one. This is a, this is one of the areas. This is one of the areas where my analysis is going to lag on purpose. I could definitely come here and be like, you know what? If I draw lines like this, that's a zero. And I could come in and I could drop my score to a zero. And I know people who still will do something like that. They're like, now it's a zero. Bam. And their score drops to four and a quarter. That's, that's a warning right there. Okay. That's not how I do it, though. What I'm going to do when things move into something like this is I start to score the the weekly activity of buyers and sellers if you remember we did this when things improved as well where we're like oh uh, we got a, a higher this quarter point higher high quarter point higher low quarter point give it another quarter of a point um what does the spy have to do to make it two is that a long-term score it's, I mean, nearly impossible because I don't know what the strongest market I've ever seen should look like. And that's what it has to be. To get to a 175, it's got to be a pretty steep, sustained, <laughs> long-term long -term trend score. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to go to a 1.5. Uh, I'm going to go to a 1.5. I want to see a couple people put their scores in, and I'm curious what they put. Short-term, oh, Sandy and I are right on... Bot. Um, uh, Steven is down to a 1.25. He dropped his by a half. Okay. You, you gave it a little bit more of a knock and said, oh, I like that. 
I like that. Um, I, I recognize that if all we ever did was come in and draw lines, we would score, but we don't want to, right? If we did the same thing uh, back here, our score would not have turned bullish when it was supposed to, right? If you if you start to score this and you're like, oh, that's that's sideways now, your score is dropping right before this thing takes off. And I want you to recognize that there is also a pretty good correlation between what we see here. So do I think that there's a chance this thing could take off from here and go one more time before May? Here's May, sell in May, go away. Yeah, I definitely think that. So 1.25 for Michael, 1.5 for Bob, 1.5 for Perry. Makes sense. Okay. So I, I just, as as we talk about it, that's what that's what we're doing, is we're trying to acknowledge that fundamentally we, we don't want to whipsaw bearishly in response. We want to hold up our posture but recognize what would trigger us. Well, if we break the 50 on the short term, that's going to make us a little bit more concerned. So we do have trigger points that even though they're not being scored, right, we're still keeping a, a lookout for them and acknowledging that a 2.6% consolidation is really just a little bit of a breath. Volume, however, volume could be in trouble. <laughs> so... Let's go take a look at a volume. Okay. So, uh, here's what's interesting. This first day, I'm now, I don't know what it was before, and there's a chance that this was a red day, but it's not anymore. We don't have context before it. All I have is a day with volume. So I'm actually going to leave that. I, I think I'm going to put that a question mark. Into. So I'm going to. I'm going to basically say no, that's a question mark. The next one's a, a bear day, right? That's a big volume day. We have a bear day. The next one is a bull day. So a funny little triangle right here. One, two, three. And uh, ultimately a tie. We have a day here. And I know this is one that we're always going to be a little off of each other. I'm always curious. I'm putting this as a question mark. I'm going to put the next one. I'm going to put this one as a question mark too. But I'm going to give this one to the buyers. How does everyone agree or think so far with what I've put here? Have I missed any big volume days now? The next one is clearly sellers. Bam. And the next one after that, I'm going to say again. Oh, that's, see, that's not great for us right there. That is not great. I think I'm going negative on this one. I've got two, two, one, two, three. Now, the thing about it is I've got two, five. How are you guys seeing it? But within three days, we lose this, but it, we still end up at what? One, three and these three here two of the three are like three of the last two of the last three candles those are fresh those are going to live here for a little while if that doesn't get overcome by buyers very quickly then we start thinking this 50 day is in trouble um Oh, I got to tell you, that is a hard one for me to not knock it. Like minimum zero for me. Minimum zero. Oh, I feel like I have to give it a, I feel like I have to go a half a point. But then I'm like, there's been a few times where I'd knock it a half a point And I'm like, I may be overreacted. 
Let's talk through this one, you guys. What do we think about this? Half a point? Do we go negative? Is anyone negative on their volume? Let me know if anyone's negative. 0.25. Okay, so you've pulled back some. You know what? Just because I've been I've been somewhat, you know, chiding myself on overreactions. I'm going to give this one more week before I let it go negative. My inclination is to take it to a, I'm going to tell, I'm just going to say this. My inclination is to go to a minus 0.25. That's my inclination. And now I think that you guys are all telling me I'm a nervous Nelly and just relax and put it zero. So I hear you. I'm going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna go zero. <laughs> okay. Okay. Zero it is. Let's go major market. Major market. Okay, what do we have here? We have the NASDAQ leading, we have the S&P, then we have the Dow, then we have the Russell. All as we've been seeing. We drop down to 133 and what do we get? Same thing except a switch with the Russell now on the opposite side and in a leading position over the Dow. Not a leading position overall, still a lagging position but it moved in front of the Dow. And that in, in and of itself is to some extent more bullish. So this looks great. What happens when we go to 66? I almost feel like I, you ever feel like you take a breath like, uh, okay, okay, we're okay, right? We still have the NASDAQ on top. We still have the Russell on top of the Dow. This still looks bullish to me. This is this is holding up. Um, it's funny because the sector went from up to a point a one and the and and major market never got there. But since then, this has dropped down to a point five, and this is just holding up. I'm I say 0.75. Does anyone see something that, that enough that they dropped theirs? How low is the lowest on major market? Let me go back. Let's finish this. I feel like I can score it where it is at point. There's not enough to change it. Um, all are dropping though. Well, remember that this is just scoring the relationship. If everything's dropping, but they stay in order, we're more inclined to think consolidation. If these things start to change order during the drop, where we start to see the NASDAQ falling the fastest, the Dow starting to show more resilience, then we start thinking, uh, correction. And then from there, possibly a bear market, right? Just a bigger gap, but order is the same, Michael said. Yep, I agree. So mine's unchanged. Um, that's just for me. Now, if you're dropping yours because you want to assess a little bit of that negativity, okay. Okay. Uh, let's go do this one while we're here. Okay. Who's up on the top? Financials, communication services, energy. Look how fast energy just smashed its way back up there. Oh, we've been talking about it for a while now. We've got technology still hanging around, industrials in there. Materials made a, a sharp move, but look at this. At least materials has had the good decency to drop a bit. We have healthcare. What do we not have? Well, discretionary is not doing great. Energy raises prices, Sandy. Hell yes, it does. Not great for our not great for our inflationary environment to have energy staying high for so long. Materials same same effect, but hopefully we're seeing at least a, a little bit of an ebb. Um, lastly, we have staples and we have utilities. Now those are our our defensive sectors. As of right now, those defensive sectors are where down down here near the near the bottom. 
Okay, we've got our context. Let's move through it. 133. Uh, now what? Still financial, still technology, still communication services, industrials. Uh, you can see that sharp move by energy, but we still not much by staples, healthcare, utilities, all down. 66 is where we look to score. Good night. Look at that damn energy doing that thing. Come on, energy. Unnecessary. Who's at the bottom? Healthcare. Healthcare is at the bottom. Uh, utilities is at the bottom. Discretionary staples. So, yeah, not big on, on anything real consumer-related right now, right? Real hesitant with anything in those areas. But I'm also not seeing anything defensive starting to raise its head and tell us to be concerned. So what's the thought process here? Now, I know some of you have allowed the energy to influence your score. And I'm I'm getting close to that. Like if I saw anything else, I still feel like 0.5 is accurate. We still have all our growth. We still have all our growth positions in place. Materials is easing up a little bit. We just happen to have some geopolitical concerns pushing um, energy higher. Okay. I'm going to leave mine at 0.5. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that things settle in, in regions that matter and see if this thing pulls back. But I do think we should put a few more energy stocks on the watch list. Tell me if you agree or disagree. Uh, Bob says he agrees. Let's go 22 just to see. Now, what's going on in the 22? We see energy strong as hell. Utilities made a push, so we're watching that. Um. We're we're keeping an eye on it, but we still have calm. We still have industrials. Eh, it's a mixed bag here, but we're we're keeping an eye. Okay. Um. Lastly, let's go take a look back at six months. Let's go VIX. So unchanged for both of those, and the VIX clearly is going to drop. Right, it has to drop. We had a higher. We had a higher low. Last week, we scored a higher high. Boom, we dropped it quarter point. This one had a higher low. Um, dun, 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 dun. Where are you? You are dropping to a one. Uh, yeah, so we are at a, a point of concern. Ooh, you're right. You're right. Bob is right. I think I had mentioned that. I agree. I didn't even get, I'm like, we had a higher low and I went right to score it, but he's right. We had a higher low here and then we busted above this higher high. We busted above the higher high. That's got to be a full point. Yeah, full point. Um, ooh, remember I said we may, may possibly see the fours. We didn't. What do we have to acknowledge? We are we we are down 1.75. That's that's now a matter of like okay. Can we still take bullish trades right now? 100%. You see bullish signals this week. They're on the table. Do we recognize there's a bit more concern and we're really kind of like all right, this this thing is like at at the precipice. It's at the edge. Something's got to happen. So that's where I stand. Um, drop down. It's our, our worst drop in a bit. I think we would all agree that, that the, what we see in the market warrants that. Yeah, we're right there for sure. Remember, that's the thing. We don't, we don't necessarily have to wait. In fact, we won't wait to go negative to trade bearish. It, 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 we're, it's not just the number, but the momentum. One more week of this, and we're definitely going to be like, whoa, here we go. Okay. Okay, a couple of other things real fast. Let's get through. Economic calendar next week. 
Uh, we have retail sales, which we're going to keep an eye on. This We would love to see this positive, but lo lower. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2 would be great, 0 0.3. That says we're okay, but we're not pushing these inflationary pressures still. That's really, that's it. The, the, we don't care about the other ones. This has been very volatile lately. I don't think anyone's paying that much attention. Tuesday, what do we have? Production, utilization, a little bit of, of um, Jer Bear having a, having a go. I'll send him a text, see if I can get a, a read on what he's going to say. I'll pass it on if I do. Beige book on Wednesday. We're, we're wondering if we're now down to two cuts, things along those lines. Um, so we're all still very in tuned to the Fed. Wednesday, jobless claims, uh, not much else, but just some more Fed speak. So what do we have? We have Fed speak, a little bit of, of peripheral inflation data, and we have earnings. Earnings. The financials have already started. Alcoa is always the, the kickoff for kind of like everybody else. That's on the 17th. That's Wednesday. Oh, don't let me forget that, Bob. And on Friday, of course, the hallowed, the legendary Austin Goolsby. Love that. Goolsby it is. I want to be Austin Goolsby for Halloween this year, I think. I'm thinking about it. Uh, Fed watch real fast. What do we have for expectations? Can we get recordings of those speakers? Well, that's a wonderful question. I wonder if you can track that down sometimes, maybe via YouTube or some streaming. Seems like these days you should be able to, right? In the, in 2024. Um, we may not, we may not have hoverboard flying skateboards, but we should at least have that. Uh, nothing in May, nothing in June. But June's at three to one. It's not like it's, uh, some people are like, maybe it's not. Come on. July, one to one, 50-50. This is hope. This is hope. Where is probability? Not until September. And that leaves us with three meetings in the, in the year, right? So, okay. I got to go faster now. Let's get to the watch list. Let's get to the watch list. And then um, we're on section eight goals, 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 goals. We'll talk about that. Of course, like every other time, I'm probably going to go five to 10 minutes over. So just bear with me for that. Run and grab another coffee if you need one. Apple. Apple is giving me hope for, um, it, it, you know, market recovery. The market has done what it's done with Apple going through a uh, more than a correction of its own. And now it's starting to show some signs. I would love to see a higher low in a trade prior to this. But yeah, I like that. AIG, if it holds. If it holds. And then let's see if it can. I think that there's opportunity. Uh, AMD. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna watch AMD a little longer, but I'm going to start getting rid of some of those chip stocks that I don't like. Amazon still looks fine. I'd actually like to see a real consolidation. It's hard to trade this right now. It's grinding a little bit. AXP looks good. The problem is earnings still in financials. We have to be careful. And there's a little bit of a hiccup in financials. We'll see what's going on there. Hmm. Boeing is a dog. We're just watching it, you know, more for science than anything. <laughs> experimentation i like bac but again it's got a hold and it's got earnings coming up so we got to be careful with what we see in those bldr uh, i'm getting rid of that from the finance or from the industrials it's 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 off my list now city i'm gonna hold and watch wfc for a calendar okay caterpillar looks fantastic very close Definitely looking for an industrial trade on Caterpillar. CMG, we're just watching as it, as it comes closer to the summer. Uh, Capital One, very close, right? So we definitely have a, an industrial and a financial in setup mode. So I still have trades. 
that I like and that I can put on. Uh, Conoco Phillips is is in a consolidation, so I certainly think there's a chance that we may have an oil trade developing here. Costco, uh, I'm going to keep watching Costco. Costco is kind of one of my staples on my list. I'm not going to throw it out, but there's plenty of these that don't look so good. CrowdStrike is getting close. Uh, Delta Post Earnings is just kind of hanging around. I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it, but let's uh, let's just make sure we understand what it would take for us to want to buy into it. I'm gonna stop watching the home builder. I just maybe I'll put home builders as a as a group at the bottom, but not that one. Okay, so the Dow. Let's talk about that. Are we seeing defensiveness where we see? Money, especially institutional money, moving into safer havens. No. No, the Dow doesn't look like that at all. Ford. I'm 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 a little bit down on, on retail consumer type, but automakers sort of drift into industrials, and I still like industrials, and so we'll see if this holds. But it I'm getting skeptical that a trade's gonna show up in time. Now that we have earnings here and we seem to be at least two days away from a trade. Michael says, take it off the list. I'm going to let it, I'm going to see how the earnings go and then we'll see. Uh, because last time it had good earnings, popped up, pulled back, gave a few opportunities. So we'll see. Fast and all off the list though. That's not, no longer worthy of our list as an industrial contender. GBTC sideways, but still. Still in an ascending triangle. Let's let's uh, with the VIX up. Would I expect money starting to switch to the Dow? If I'm concerned that it's turning into corre a correction, yes. But if it's going to hold, and, and that's what we've seen, maybe not. Okay, so here's the ascending triangle. Now, does it break? If it breaks, um. Its next target would be 80. If it if it breaks this way, making this a triple top, one, two, three, triple top. If it breaks the other way, then we're going to probably end up, I would say, maybe back down here. Not quite 45. I'll call it 47. 47. Okay. Mr. Goolsby talking a week ago. <laughs> okay. Let's have a quick poll for GBTC as a representation of Bitcoin. 80? Or 47, which is it going to hit next? Which is it going to hit next? 80 or 47? <laughs> I love it. Sandy said 47. Press said 80. Bob said 47. Michael said 80. Perry says 47. This is awesome. I love this one. Uh, it won't go lower than 60. So press says it will not, it will not confirm the triple top. Grayland says 47. <sighs> I'm as of right now, as of right now, I'm going to join the 80 camp. I know. And you're probably like, what? And here's why, because an ascending triangle as a pattern being, being a continuation, I'm going to lean continuation until not. Once it breaks that lower end of that triangle, then I'm definitely jumping to 47. <laughs> it's a fun one to watch, though, isn't it? Okay. The halving is coming up soon. So there's the halving, but then I know there's also some legislative concerns that they have. Anyway, GE Aerospace, that's on my list, but it has earnings, so be careful. Gold, easing up a little. I love Google, but need a pullback. IBM, off. You're out, IBM. You're off the list. 
JP Morgan out off the list. Meta, I need to update the list today, don't I? I'm going to update the watch list today. You can go into the dock and grab that. Still like Meta, but earnings are coming up. We don't have a lot of time for a trade to develop. Morgan off the list. A lot of financials are dropping. Dropping like flies. We're going to have to see what happens as the dust settles. Who we keep. We'll keep searching just to watch as it recovers. Micron, still okay. Netflix, still okay. NVIDIA, still okay. Picar, still okay. Okay, but none of these are super tradable right now. So we're still kind of in a little bit of a holding period here. PLTR, I'm going to leave it for now. The Q still on top of the 50. SMCI still on top. SPY still on top. Taiwan. Okay. Waste management still on top. Walmart. Materials coming down. We like to see that. Communication services holding up. We like to see that. Energy. Okay. A little bit of a pullback. We like that. That would be helpful. That would be very helpful for our market if that would re ease up. There's financials breaking the 50. That's a bit concerning. That's why we just dropped four or five financial stocks. Bam, 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 bam. Off the list. Industrials still fine. Looks strong still. Love it. Technology holding up. It's got to hold up. Staples. That doesn't look that doesn't look like it's getting defensive. That looks like it's breaking down pretty hard. Utilities. That looks stable, but not advancing. Healthcare looks weak. Consumer looks neutral. Um, okay, that's our watch list. Um, okay, are you guys ready for this? The unveiling? Okay, so here's the work. If you're not in Discord, I'm going to send an invite. When you get to Discord, thank you, Bob, for recognizing I took our market watch logo bull and I moved it into our header or our icon looks cool right the the market watch green bull love it okay now here is I don't know what's going to happen I'm I'm trying to figure that out it's like we only had this one chat but as I moved into a community it said I need a rules channel and i'm like oh okay i guess and so this is like designating this the rules channel but i've started three new chats so there's two types of channels there is text channels in text channels is this you can post links you can put memes you can you can like and you can type and i mean this is just and it's an ongoing stream of consciousness of a group so what streams of consciousness do we want? Well, we'll have trading discussions. That is here. That is discussing things pertinent to now, trading. Uh, trading conditions, trades you're thinking about, trades you're in, trading discussions. If you're talking, um, you have it for another org, you need to have it up in here where it says add a server. And you need to add our server because if you have multiple servers, each org would have a, one of these and you could have like five different servers that you participate in. And when you clicked on our server like that, then you would get this menu here. And if you went to somebody else, you would get their menu of their different options. Yeah. Okay. So um, trading discussions. TOS has a channel. There you go, Bob. Nice. I did not know that. So trading discussions. Now, if you want to talk about specific options discussions, the Greeks, strategies, those are going to go here into options discussions. Right? And if you want to talk about trading plan, hey, I want some feedback. Hey, I'm working on this. Hey, so each week I'll... I'll uh, I'm thinking about this because we each week work on a different section of our plan. I'm, I'm trying to think of ways that we can use this more. So those are just going to be Stephen. Stephen noticed this this morning and he posted over here and said, 
Um, when we when we when may we start putting info on the new channels? Open for business, my friend. Open for business. You have these three. Welcome. Um, oh, look at that. He already posted. I didn't even notice that. I guess I have to I have to make sure that I know what's gonna send alerts or move my way around. So I'm 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 learning still too. I call my son all the time. He uses Discord when he video games. And so I'm like, hey, how do I make this? We're, we're all going to, to some extent, learn together. But this is going to be an amazing community for us. Okay. Now, then we have voice channels. Now, the voice channels, you can you can pop in there and turn your camera on. And then if you've ever done like a Zoom call with other people, you're you're interacting. You're talking. You can see each other on camera. You can share screens with each other. As a community, we have pretty rigid rigid rules. I mean, I have to do some work on the rules. I think I put some rules on our stuff somewhere, but I have to be a little more deliberate with what they are and where they go. Um, so, you know, let's all be very respectful. And <laughs> of course, I would expect that we would. Um just clicked on the Goolsby link. Thanks, Steve. No, oh, thank you for that. Okay, so now we have what? Now, we have this channel here is just an announcements channel. I, I don't know exactly how it works um, as far as this goes. I think you have the ability to, like, have it notify you, like, where did it come from? Oh, it's from this channel. Um, as, we, as I learn more about notifications and things, I'll, I'll update us all, but... If we have an announcement, so if I'm like, oh, we're changing the time or we're doing this or whatever, you'll be able to see it, et cetera, and, and the announcement will come through here. But then we have these two. We have Market Watch Meetups. That's this channel here. And if I'm going to switch, it's going to confirm that I'm switching over here. Now I'm going to go into this, this other channel, Market Watch Meetups. And you can see that in, in here, I could share my screen. I could turn my camera on and I could interact with other people. This is this meetups is going to be used. You'll see here in just a minute for very specific events to coordinate coming in together. This market watch junkies. This is going to be like, hey, if anyone's ever just like, man, I love talking about the market. That's where you may go to find that's just you pop in and see if someone's there also. The last piece of this is the market watch stage. The stage is mine. That's where I am going to start presenting these. So for a little while, I'm going to still launch Zoom, but I'm also going to turn on the stage. So if you want to come and start watching via Discord instead of via Zoom, I not only welcome it, but I hope you do so that we can get some some user testing and uh, work out any bugs. Will I be using the stage with voice? 100%. I'm going to turn the stage on. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to turn my voice on. It'll be ready to go. Um, now, with stage, it's still only my voice, right? But no one else will be able to talk. Um, I think it's an easier way to possibly allow me to invite others to, to speak at times. Um, so Bob's popping into the market watch meetups right now. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Ah, he's saying hello. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Um, so last thing I want to show you guys are popping in there. I love it. I'm gonna pop out of that here. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you guys in there. And I'm gonna show you one more thing. I want you to look up here in the top left hand corner. You can browse channels and you can just kind of see what's happening in here. And you can you can see which ones you want to follow or not. So if you're like, you know what? I'm never gonna go into the junkies. You can uncheck it. I'm never gonna do the option. What you can you can manage that. But look at this calendar, events. This is the magic right here. Steven wants to be up. Here's the problem is that even right now, um, as you see the number of attendees, it's impossible for us to allow everyone to speak. 
So I, I have to have control, um, especially as the group grows. It's the only it's the only tenable way to do it. Um, I've I've seen nightmares of situations where they try to open mics. Um, so I'm willing to like every now and again where you can kind of open one person to participate. Um, but you will be able to interact with each other via typing. So that's good. Uh, now, here is our calendar of events. So you can see this repeats every Sunday, our weekly market posture. Where does it occur? It occurs on the stage. Um, now, this is my time. I think if you look at yours, it should show it in your time. Does that is that true? Is anyone looking at the calendar? So like Sandy, I think yours should put these in your time zone all the time, even when it's daylight savings, because it the magic of the computer does it for us. I, I don't know. I want to confirm that. I have it at 9 a.m. That's my time. Um, yours says start. Mine says starting soon, too, because I didn't ever start it. Um, if I, uh, if I go back to the stage, I think it would still let me start this meeting. So if you'll look here, we have weekly market posture. If you click on it, look at my a fancy graphic, my coffee in the sun. Yours says 11 is your local time. Love it. Yes, it worked. So this is when someone comes in, they have a little intro. When does it start? I have the ability to start it. People can be interested in it. You can add it to your calendar. If you click here, where's my donut? You can add it to your calendar. Um, this is Sandy up in the top left-hand corner. You have events. And when you click events, it pops up our calendar. Um, and this shows you. Now, tomorrow morning. For me, it's at 7.15 a.m. It repeats every Monday. What do we have? The weekly market open. Okay, now, Sandy, does that give your local time for the start time? Because if it does, then everything is, yes. Oh, yeah, it's all working like magic. Okay, uh, the weekly market open. Look at my fancy graphics. Aren't those cool? Market watch stage. Now, here we go. Here's a new event. This event will occur on Monday night. I'm gonna, we're going to give it a shot tomorrow. This is going to be a social cocktail hour. Monday, 6.30. Where does this occur? At the Market Watch meetups. What are we going to do? We're going to unwind and mingle with fellow traders at our Monday Market Watch cocktail hour. Grab your favorite drink and join us for an evening of casual conversation, camaraderie, and community. So is that 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, Michael? Yes. I'm open to change times. If, is that too late? Is that, I, I, I was trying to figure out where can I get everybody to be able to come in and say hello, possibly. Um, so that is that is going to be Monday. Now what else? Then we, then we move forward Tuesday. Now, we've tried this before, but now it's going to be more formal, okay? So Tuesday, we have morning market watch chat, okay? That is going to occur in trading. You can't find the cocktail? <gasps> I wonder if it's not shared. I'll, okay, let me go make sure that everybody is invited. Can anyone see the cocktail one? Do you have the morning market chat? Everybody else has cocktail? Yeah, scroll down. You might have to scroll down a little bit from here. If you uh, if you scroll down, there's a, if you roll it or if you grab this right here over on the right hand side, you can. Okay, Paul sees it. Got it. Love it. Okay, so after cocktail, now what do we have on morning market watch chat? What is that? That is every Tuesday morning, fifteen minutes before the market opens, for an hour long text only trading discussion. Traders gather in a relaxed setting to evaluate market news, analyze conditions. Now, this may or may not, and sometimes an instructor. This is you guys. You join each other and have a chat. We've tried this. We're going to formalize it. So you'll get reminders. 
So on every Tuesday, because we meet Monday, we meet we meet Wednesday, right? Monday and Wednesday we meet. So on Tuesday and Thursday, you'll have morning market watch chat. Um, now here's our foundations. Look at my bull bet. God, you, I had so much fun with these graphics, you guys. I can't even tell you. Look at the bull and the bear. Market watch foundations. So whether we're doing trading foundations or options foundations, or if we're doing like a working session on trading plans or analytics or a trading experiment, it's always going to be here, right? We're, we're, we're within the next week or two, within the next week or two, we will be out of Zoom forever and only on Discord. So <laughs> this is where we live. Welcome to your new home. I tried to make it look nice here. Fancy, fancy pictures on the wall. <laughs> um, midweek check-in every Wednesday. Where does that occur? At the Market Watch stage. Then here's another new one for you. Okay. This is a this is a you only with instructors sometimes coming in. That's where like I might pop in or you know, Gary or Glenn may may show up in there. Um, and so you can see here, this will be a closing bell last hour on Wednesday. This will occur in market watch meetups. So you'll go into the meetups. You can share a screen. If someone wants to turn their screen on to talk about a chart, your camera's on should be a cool event. Um, then we have another market watch chat on Thursday morning. Then we have market watch foundations Thursday. I set the time wrong. Okay. Did I get the other one? Right. Uh, I set the time wrong on foundations. I'll go fix those. My bad. <laughs> I'm glad we're talking through this. I'm sorry that we went a little over, but I hope you feel like it's worth it because this is going to give us, this is two a day, whether it's with me or just with each other, two formal meetings a day. We'll have a, we'll have a, a I mean, I hope you feel like we're going to really kind of leverage the community here. Uh, okay. Market open. That's, uh, that's, now, this is going to be where you can replicate Monday, Wednesday, but do it together. That's going to be not text. That's in the meetups. So make sure you're watching. Where is it going to occur? But you can always go here and just join from this directly. So the Market Watch open, that's you um, on Friday, an interactive collaborative session, just like the instructor-led working together starting 15 minutes before. And then we have our weekly market wrap this thing just repeats and cycles. If I ever have to, I can change one event. So if we ever have a schedule change, I will I will make the notation in here. This is going to be an ongoing ability for me to 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 show stuff to you. Woohoo! Can I get Discord on my laptop? Laptop, desktop, phone. Put it on your phone. Put it on your tablet. Put it on your Apple Watch. I don't know if it goes on your Apple Watch or not. Um, this is, so this is us recognizing the strength and value of committed like-minded traders and, and the community that we can have together. I've been really trying to find a way to like leverage this. I, I feel like I'm close. I'm at least a step closer. <laughs> All right. So, um, th there's going to be some, some growing pains, as we try to do it. So for the next week or two, what I'm going to try to do is both. Um, I'm going to try to do both. So tomorrow morning, I am going to launch from the stage. If you're going to try to watch from the stage, also be ready to pop into Zoom in case we have problems, right? Um, so that's what I would ask in order to help with the transition. So yes, I am going to, I'm going to launch from the stage, but I'm also going to go from Zoom for at least a week or two. Um, that's the that's the intention. Thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. Um, while while you type those, I'm gonna wrap us up. Let's pop over here. We are on the last section. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Uh, we are on the last, I think it's going to give you a chance to interact together even more during sessions. I think it's going to really improve everything. Less friction getting in, more interactivity, more community development. Um, gives you more offline resources, right, to interact with. Because if we really flesh this thing out, man, and you guys are able to kind of 
I even said, I think some of this is going to end up with people finding trading partners, which are invaluable, someone that you can bounce ideas off of, meet up with, things like that. So definitely like love it. Thank you, Graylin. Uh, we are on improvement strategies and then we're starting over one more week. What are you working on? Goals. Focus on the process, please, not the outcome. I tell people you can have one outcome goal, maybe. I say have none. Your outcome will take care of itself. Focus on the process, okay? Make sure you're uh, you're setting up a place to keep your goals, a spreadsheet, something. Make them smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, yada, 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 right? So what do we want to do? Um, set a timeline, define action steps to complete it. Um, what are we focusing on? Weaknesses from section one, trading priorities um, that we, right? Everything, everything that you've done in here should be informing you to how can I now get better? What do I see in my record keeping that I can do to get better? Also check the email address on the bottom of each email I send. Deal, Michael, deal. I will do that. Um, so let's finish up strong and then we'll work on the next one. Got to go. Awesome. We're wrapping up anyways. Good to see everybody last week. And then we start over. Um, if you're not on, if you're not on uh, discord, I will send instructions today. Make sure you get on, get in there, say hello. Let's let's we, that's where we live now. So, you know, go settle in, get a, get yourself a nice, uh, um, what do they call those persons? Not an emoji, your, your person. I don't know your image. Learn to use the emojis. It should be awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your Sunday. As always, happy trading.